Hey guys, Ray from LoveYourRV.com. Today I'm going to update you on some repairs I've done in the recent past. The old Cougar's hitting just about nine years now and we've lived in it full time so and used it a ton so things are always cropping up that need to be repaired so I've done some repairs now I'm kind of updating you on how they turned out. A lot of people are always interested to see if they worked out. Two big ones I'm going to start with are the slide. Um, this, this summer I discovered um, part of the floor had rotted and was getting really mushy in that corner over there and I think I caught it in time before I had to replace the whole slide floor and I did a patch job on that and then also I've been having chronic troubles with my waste tanks uh, the black and gray had a crack in the corner and I used a, a product called PlastiMend um, last the, the, the year before last and it worked, but every month or so or two months it would crack again. So I've tried a different product this time and we'll see how that's worked out. And then there's a bunch of other little ones I'll go through. So let's start with the waste tanks because they're pretty important when you're uh, out boondocking. Here's the stuff I use for the latest repair, West Systems Epoxy Plastic Boat Repair Kit. And it came with a hardener and a resin. It's a two-part epoxy adhesive. And I also layered it with some uh, fiberglass uh, uh, fabric in between. So let's go under and see how it's worked out for me. Here we go. So this is the corner where I was having the cracking problem. And so far so good. No signs of a re-crack and I haven't had any leaking at all. So I've traveled with partially full or full tanks about a dozen times now so uh, and, and over many miles so it's had a good uh, workout uh, including going in and out of some uh, boondocking locations on on off-road dirt roads so I'm quite happy with that it's been uh, holding up really well much better than the the Plasti Mend uh, patch did previously next up the slide out repair so this is the corner where I had all the problems and I had determined it was from a flaw in the way that it was manufactured. The water would come down over here and the wood was kind of exposed. It had a little bit of a plastic covering. The water would wick under and uh, it got slowly over the years got in and, and brought it out the wood. So I've installed an aluminum uh, piece here and the water comes down and it gives it a drip edge so it just drips right off. I've been in severe uh, storms and it hasn't been a problem. I've gone out and watched it dripping. Let's crawl under and I'll show you exactly what's going on. There we are there. So that's the aluminum angle piece, how far it comes in. So it comes in far enough that the water can't come in and travel. And this is the piece that I changed. You can see it's maybe a foot and a half wide and there was a seam that went along here a lot of people commented how I had left the seam open I don't really know why there was a, a big worry about that because this is three-quarter inch plywood this is three-quarter inch plywood and then above this three-quarter inch plywood I had screwed down a big sheet of three-quarter inch plywood and everything had been covered with epoxy uh, resin so there really was nowhere for anything to go in that seam but I've since uh, filled the seam with uh, Cicaflex sealant and then I put some Gorilla Tape on it as well just to make it look good I guess but this has worked fine so the slide has gone in and out I guess about 30 or 40 times now in and out over the and hasn't had a, a lick of problem it's come in really nice if you do this repair and you change this over here, you might want to go with plastic. I decided to go with aluminum maybe just for durability. But you really have to watch right there where it rides. It's, well, my particular design, it rides up on a plastic shim that lets it slide across. So you have to make sure this is far enough in or clears that shim or it'll run into the shim. And then it would be a big mess. It would just push all that back. So you have to really watch your clearance. Um, you could jack the slide up a bit and slide it under that shim just so it gets rolling. But I haven't had any problems with clearance issues. And just to be safe, I put the aluminum corner bead 
on the other side of the slide too. This side floor was all dry and hard. It didn't have any problems, but I thought I'd better do it before anything happened. Overall, I'm happy with the slide repair. It saved me a bunch of money trying to replace that whole slide floor. If it fails, I can always do it. This didn't cost much money to do, and it seems like it's going to be lasting fine. There was one minor issue with it. I'll go inside and show you what's happening on the floor. So here's the only issue I'm having. You can see right down here, you can kind of see a black strip. And that's being laid down by the aluminum, coming off that aluminum corner bead coming in. I guess it rubs on this black plastic and it's picking up some black off it and laying it down onto the, the vinyl flooring there. It does clean off. Let me show you the other side here. Here's where the other side, you can't really see it. I've gone and cleaned it off. It just come, cleans off with a, uh, a household cleaner. Um, but uh, it does lay down some black tracks. It doesn't damage the floor at all. It's kind of weird. There we go. Quick wipe and it's pretty well gone. So. That's the only kind of little nagging fiddly thing that showed up after that repair. And uh, if I do end up upgrading this floor, I'm really going to have to be concerned about that clearance and how it affects the new floor. But until then, it'll be fine for now. The, actually, this spot is actually where we put our, our uh, leather chair, so it doesn't even see the light of day. Those were the big two repairs I wanted to update you on because either of those would really throw a wrench in the works for our, our snowbird trip. But there's uh, several other minor ones I've done so I'll go through those next and, and let you know how they're going. My electric valves had a problem last uh, summer. The black started leaking all the time. It wouldn't close completely. So I disassembled the whole uh, plumbing system down there, pulled the valve and found a big chunk of kind of debris with looked like sawdust in it. It had jammed solid in there and uh, cleaned it all and removed it and ever since then the valves have, have worked great. No problem with them. Also during last summer I discovered my fresh water tank that sits side to side right across the back here had fallen down on one side and, was, and the underbelly was pushing about six inches down and on that side I found the screws had sheared off that were holding the rail that held the tank in place. So I'm really glad I found that before we got off boondocking. And if you remember I added a third screw. They had used uh, two screws to hold the rail. So I added a third since there was a hole in their bracket that they had never used. Uh, a lot of people advise that I should uh, maybe use a grade 8 bolts in, in there instead so that might be an option to crawl under there this next summer and do that also I might uh, add some extra brackets under the tank itself just to beef everything out, up but I just wanted to report to everybody that so far the repair has been holding in place and we've been traveling a lot with a with a full tank of water of course being that we're boondocking a lot now another repair was to replace faulty uh, trailer light uh, fixtures. Uh, the license plate bracket had broken off so I decided to just go with the same trailer lights that were on there before and they've worked fine of course being brand new. A lot of people mentioned that I should have went with LED lights. Um, I really would like to go with LED lights but everything I could find was much smaller than this fixture and then because the the cougar has yellowed out here. I have this kind of weird effect where I'd have kind of a nice white area around and then a yellow area. So decided just to put the originals on. They'd lasted great for eight years. No one rear-ended me or anything. But uh, if I do find an LED fixture that's just the right size, I'll probably switch to those. One repair that has failed again is the check valve on my city water connection. So I think it was about a year ago I'd be uh, boondocking or whatever and I'd be getting water dripping out of here and just a little bit. 
So I took it apart and inside there there's a check valve that's supposed to, when you pressurize a system with the water pump, it's supposed to let water not come out this way. So there's a little rubber o-ring. So I took it all apart and the o-ring had shifted position and was leaking. And I put it all back together and it worked fine for probably about five or six months. Then it started dripping again. So that's why I have this plug on here right now. But recently I got a chance to stop at an RV parts place and I picked up a whole new replacement for that output with a fresh check valve in it so I just haven't gotten around to put it in yet but that repair did fail it was I figured it, it might not last if, if it had shifted once it'd probably shift again but thought I'd update you on that another repair I did about a year ago was to restring the blinds uh, the strings that run through here had uh, broken so I bought a blind repair kit that came with new strings and learned how to do it myself which uh, probably is going to be a good skill to have. And the kit has a bunch of extra strings, so if any other of these uh, dual blinds go, I can repair them. But this one's seemed to be functioning. It's worked good for the last year. Another repair that hasn't totally worked out has been the ceiling fan. There's still a little squeak in it. Remember I took it all apart and inspected it and tried to get some... Uh, lubricant into the bearing but the bearings a sealed bearing and there was a little play in the motor so it still has a minor squeak um, but I have found the motor online for that and it's it's really only about thirty dollars or so so to get a chance I'll order a new motor and, and throw it in there that's the fantastic vent fan another repair I did in the summer was to the awning switch it was having a problem where it was cutting out and not working and I took the panel apart and I found there was a crimp connector that was causing the problem. So I redid that and ever since it's been fine. It's worked perfectly well each way for the awning. And finally, speaking of the awning, if you've watched me over the years, you know I've been slowly patching this sucker, trying to get as much as I can out of this material before I replace it. So I had used a Gorilla Clear Tape for quite a while and that was working out and then the threads that hold the awning seam in place the bead were starting to pull out so uh, before we left on the trip I took some Eternabond tape and ran a strip all the way along the edge just so it doesn't pull away from the the main uh, frame there and I'd lose the material put some on the underside as well just to hold it in place I'm going to try to get one more season down here out of this awning. Hopefully a windstorm doesn't take it away, but if I can get one more season, I'll probably stop on my way back home and pick up new material at a, a place people recommend called Tough Top Awnings. But I think it'll hold in place for a few more months. There you go. I think that's 10 different uh, repair updates for you. So it's always a battle once the rig gets old, but I sure uh, saved myself a lot of money by doing the repairs myself. And we could buy a new RV, but they're pretty expensive, so it's a lot cheaper to keep this old boy going. So if you want to see more of those repairs in detail, I'll leave uh, the links to the, the original repair um, posts and videos in the description. Till next time, Ray from loveyourrv.com. Thanks for watching, everyone. Cheers.